hello and welcome back to the Mark IV um, project videos. Um, so last time I had a bit of a problem. I was trying to do a dynamometer run, uh, but things didn't quite go to plan and the hot uh, hot diaphragm seal uh, actually failed. Um, so what I've done is um, I've fitted uh, another um, design, uh, uh, design seal uh, and we're going to give it another go. Um, I think my focus now will be actually to get this, this hot seal diaphragm working properly. Um, then we can go back and do the uh, dynamometer run. Okay, so this is the next uh, experimental seal for the hot side. So on the inside, I've got this um, this canvas type material. Uh, so this is fiberglass cloth um, coated with silicon. Um, this is available from uh, a suppliers that sell insulation. Uh, this stuff came from Vitkus, which is an online uh, store. On the outside, I've gone for a, um, so this is natural rubber again. So it's like a two part system. Uh, the natural rubber has very good elastic um, prop uh, properties and is fairly durable um, as long as it doesn't get too hot, as we found out a few videos ago. Right, so we're one hour in now, still going strong. Right, something interesting to note at the moment. Um, somebody uh, gave me this idea, uh, Stanislav um, gave me this idea. Um, if I apply a slight pressure to the, um, the normal return valve going into the engine, it, the slapping of the uh, diaphragm actually stops. So I'll do that now. Now you can see the actual the slapping stops because the, uh, the internal uh, gases in the engine are actually uh, at a slight pressure. Um, so that might be a future uh, modification to keep the hole a, a, a constant slight pressure on it. And as, it's, as the gas is so surely leak out, the slapping comes back again. So it's managed about uh, an hour and a half, um, but now we've got the pin prick again in exactly the same place as the silicon seal. Even though it's got a hole in it, it'll still run. So I'm going to keep it running as long as I can. Um, so when I take the hot side bits again, um, I'll have a better idea of what's wearing um, and I'll bother to evaluate the situation a bit better. Right, we've got two holes now. The air leaks are just too much and it's stopping. There we go. That's the end of that one. Right, so we're just taking this off now. Um, you can see a bit more of the uh, cement has fallen off. Uh, this wasn't high temperature cement. Um, so um, that's probably my fault really. Okay, it actually looks like the cement might have actually put the hole in the seal because it's come away um, and put a hole in it. So it might be that that is the problem and not the creasing. <laughs> Okay, so this is the next seal to try. So I've got some um, fire blanket, which is a fiberglass cloth. Um, I've painted it with a silicon emulsion. Um, and for the rubber bit, I've got some EPDM rubber. This, this stuff is four millimeter thick. All right, so it's been running for 10 minutes now. Uh, that's the four millimeter EPDM rubber um, and it's just ripped right there. Right, I would say the last test run was a bit inconclusive really. This is an off cut of the material that I made the diaphragm from. Uh, I bought it as a EDPM four millimeter. I put a nick in it and ripped it and it's fairly easy to rip. I do wonder whether it is what, what it says it is. I did buy it off eBay so it might not be exactly uh, what I plan on getting. I got this uh, 1.6 stuff, but unfortunately I didn't bite big enough to actually for the job. Um, I put a nick in this, uh, and this is decidedly harder to rip. So I'm, I'm, I'm really questioning that this four millimeter is what it is. So the test is a bit inconclusive really, um, but never, never fear, I'll have to do something else now. Right, so uh, this is the next one to try. Uh, so on the inside, I've got the, um, the fire blanket, uh, which is uh, glass cloth. 
in between i've got two millimeter natural rubber on the on the outside i've got some cotton canvas i'm hoping the cotton cameras will support the natural rubber uh, from the pressures within the engine right we're up to an hour and a quarter now still going strong There was a bit of smoke coming off um, this earlier on. Um, I think it's because I've used natural rubber, um, it's hit its uh, temperature limit. Um, but what I think is happening is the canvas is actually supporting it. So even though it's probably breaking down and got a bit soft, um, the canvas is kind of just holding it in check. Right, it's been running almost two hours now. The, um, the fire's almost uh, gone out and it's getting a bit low. So the hot seal is still sealing just about. There is a slight air leak, but um, I think it uh, might be uh, me when I actually sealed it. I wasn't uh, that careful, if I'm honest, because uh, I've put this on, on 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 and off quite a few times now, and I'm getting a bit sick of doing it. <laughs> so it's quite puffy, um, but it's still sealing. The cold side um, is getting warm, um, but it's still holding for the moment. Um, what I might try and do now is actually do a power test. So I'm going to let it die out a minute, the fire. Um, then I'm going to put all the dynamometer stuff on. And then when my father comes round, we shall be in a good position to give it a power test. Right, let's try and take some readings before something fails. Right, we just um, stoked the fire up with some uh, wood. Um, I'm just checking the temperatures of the flue gas as they're going into the heat exchanger. Um, we've got about just slightly less than 550 Celsius on the on the thermometer here. 200. 212. Check that. 218. Right, so quickly take the temperatures. Uh, so roughly 180 degrees C. Uh, that's straight out of the uh, or the the cool cold section uh, right next to the furnace, uh, midway along the cooler, uh, about 50 degrees C. Right, right at the cold end, it's about 40 degrees C. You can see here, there's uh, the black the steel is actually melting on the hot side because we've ran it hotter than we ever have done before. Right, we're going to um, call it a day now. Uh, the engine's been running for about three hours. Uh, the cold side is about how it was before, um, but then we don't have the heat issues on that side. The hot side is a little worse for wear. You can see that the uh, the rubber seal was basically melted, but then it's, it's only natural rubber anyhow. Um, we believe that there is a lot of heat being transmitted through this piece here. Um, now that I've welded the cone on the inside of it, we can actually uh, either drill some holes uh, to cut down on the, um, the cross section of that so the heat isn't transmitted along it. Right, that's it. Right, so we've got some results. Um, it's not too exciting, unfortunately. Um, the maximum power at the moment is at 250 RPM, and we've got 44.8 watts. So um, it's fair to say we've got a fair bit more work to do with this engine yet. Um, but at least it ran, and at least we could take some power readings. Okay, after the high power run with maximum heat, um, there's been some buckling in the hot heat exchanger. So you can see that one there. Uh, right, so we've just taken the hot piston back off to see um, how things are doing. So on the inside, we've got this uh, glass cloth. It's lasted fairly well, but as you can see in places, it's actually, uh, it's actually worn through. Um, it might be the flexing that's caused that. Does seem seem like it's that. Um, in the places that it has worn through, uh, the rubber the rubber is then melted. In the places it hasn't worn through, um, the rubber is in surprisingly good condition. Um, so for quite a while, this thing was actually leaking technically, probably during the test as well. To be fair. Um, the cloth on the outside has held things together remarkably well, actually. So as long as this, the uh, the cotton cloth has uh, cooling uh, or cold enough, 
and it seems to hold out quite nicely. Right, so there you go. That's the fun for the day. Um, so we've gained a bit more experience in um, the various seal materials that can be used. Um, on the last run, it did last for three hours, which is a good thing. Um, so we got a better feel for um, for what, what we can use for that. Um, power output wasn't too incredible. Uh, 48 watts um, isn't really a great deal. Um, I would like to say you could light a 60 watt light bulb, but uh, you wouldn't really bother to do that either, really. So um, a little bit of work to do there. Um, the good thing is I'm well aware of a lot of the, um, the shortcomings of the design, um, mainly for a lot of your comments, actually. Um, so over the coming weeks, I want to actually put some of those into action um, to try and improve the power output of the engine. So uh, stay tuned. All right, see you until next time. Bye. <laughs>